There's a new cursor competitor that actually looks really promising. Yes, it's a VS Code fork, but no, it's not some random startup. This time, it's by Google. Introducing Anti-Gravity, the new AI IDE that Google just put out and is currently fully free to use, which is kind of unbelievable. They gave me early access and I've been playing a whole bunch, but the models I have access to are Gemini 3 and 2.5, it's my understanding that when it drops, there will be a bunch of other models as well. That said, it's definitely built around Gemini 3, and I've seen some cool stuff that I haven't seen much from other editors. They have a full browser control mode, like makes sense, Google makes this editor, Google makes Chrome. Those should come together a bit. But what's much more exciting to me is the new agent manager workflow. I think this is a great idea, and there's a lot of little pieces that I'm hyped about. There are also a lot of weird catches, bugs, and all the things you would expect from a new editor being rushed out by a company that's as big as Google, but they do seem to have learned a lot of good lessons from the IP and the humans that they acquired from Windsurf way back in like, what, three months ago now? Seriously, things move so fast in this industry. We will be talking a good bit about my experience with Gemini 3 here, but most of this video is focused on anti-gravity. If you're looking for a breakdown of Gemini 3, that's coming later today. Don't worry, it'll be here soon. But I really wanted to get in front of this editor because it's really different and cool. As you guys know, I would never take money from Google before covering something like this, but I will take money from today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is Modal. They're already the best place to host your AI infrastructure for actually running your LLMs, but they've added something really cool that will help your AI code even more. Their new secure sandboxes. Yeah, there's finally a good place to run your AI generated code and do things that you might not want to do on a server that has access to stuff like, you know, your database. Wouldn't it be nice if you had little isolates you could use for whatever code is being generated by these models to safely execute? Or maybe you write your own code in order to do weird agentic stuff where you have to keep things running forever. This stuff is obnoxious to set up, believe me, I've been trying to do it with T3Chat, and Modal's here to make it significantly easier and more scalable. Huge companies like Lovable and Scale are already making the move to Modal's infrastructure for sandboxes. According to Anton from Lovable, Modal was the only infrastructure provider that enabled us to reliably run tens of thousands of app creation sessions in an instant. We're excited to build with them for the long term. Setting up a sandbox couldn't be easier. Just install their SDK and spin up an app. It's that easy. Creating a volume or an image is just as easy. You just literally call the SDK and then you can create a sandbox instance and execute code in it. It's that easy. And yes, this works in TypeScript and in Go as well. They have a full Go SDK released too. If your models can't run code, they're not as smart as they should be. Make them smarter today at soydiv.link slash modal. So here it is, VS Code, but not. It's very VS Code based. They do hide it a bit more than most. It's silly, but uh, in settings, they don't have VS Code settings like other editors do. They say editor settings. But if you click the about, you'll see the VS Code OSS version that it's based on. And when you go into the settings, you can see a few other interesting things. They have all the stuff for their tab autocomplete, which is okay. Nowhere near as good as cursors, but it works. Not the thing I'm most hyped about here at all, though. They have a whole notification system that I disable because I hate when my editor gives me like system notifications. And if you hop to the marketplace for VS Code extensions, they show you they're using OpenVSX. And if you want to put a custom URL for a custom marketplace, you're able to do that. All pretty basic stuff. But what I'm here for is the agent piece. When Ben was trying this, he managed to get it into a state where it mentioned Cascade, which is how the agent stuff works in Windsurf, which means that this code base definitely started from Windsurf, at least some amount. This isn't a fresh rewrite. This is clearly reusing code from Windsurf as part of that weird pseudo acquisition thing that Google did. But who cares where the code came from? I want to actually give this a shot, especially during this free period. During the preview window, Google confirmed that it'll be entirely free to use with reasonable limits. They said that they reset every five hours and most users should never see limits. I'll be honest, I even saw them during testing. Might have been a bug. They were saying they were trying to fix it, so not positive. Regardless, it's free with relatively generous limits. You do have to sign into a Google account, but free Gemini 3, anyone? Pretty cool. Something else you might notice, especially if I zoom in, is the planning button here. It starts with just planning. That's the default thing it really wants to push you on. And it's not planning in build mode, it's planning or fast mode, because the fast mode is meant to skip planning. It really feels like they intend for you to plan stuff here, especially when you look in the agent manager and you see the inbox. It really leans into this idea of you as a person on the outside managing the workflow between different things. They even create workspaces for you for each of the projects that you're using. And I like this idea a lot. The idea that I have these different tasks and projects that I can hop between in an external thing. And then when I'm in any one of these and I hit Command E, it brings me to the editor that's open with that specific piece. 
I love the idea of the agent manager being a separate window outside of the editor. They talk about that a bit in their launch blog post saying that they don't want the agent manager to be stuffed and squeezed in to the editor. Instead, the agent manager should be commanding and controlling the editor. This is a really cool idea. Also makes it feel genuinely absurd that they don't have Git work tree support. I can parallelize between different projects, but I cannot parallelize within a project unless I'm using background agents, which supposedly this will work for in the future, but it doesn't yet. Just give me work trees. Cursor figured this out and it's so good now that I have it. I'm just begging, please do it. But what's I like to actually use? I've been trying to daily drive this for a few days now and there are, there are gotchas and catches for sure. The model helps a lot. I've been relatively impressed with Gemini 3, especially for one-shotting like one-off things. Here's an example that I did earlier. I asked it to make a simulation aquarium game similar to a game I used to like as a kid, Insane Aquarium. Told it to use 3JS because they had a similar demo. And here we are. I can drop food pellets into the tank. The fish will eventually, once they get hungry, run over for the food and drop coins that I can grab if I click them precisely enough. And I can buy fish as well. Pretty cool, but like, obviously those aren't very fish looking. They're just creating shapes using 3JS primitives, but not bad for one shot. How does this compare to something a little more, you know, expensive? Like, you know, Codex High. I gave the exact same prompt to Codex High and the results are not really functional. You see this like 2D fish moving there. That's the debug that they added in because I was having so many problems before. I was fighting this for literal hours and this is the best it could do. I'm scared to see how many tokens it burned. I don't know if it'll tell me at the end here. 3 million cached tokens, 3.5 total. And that's what I got out of it. This took almost an hour. So I tried giving it a simpler version where I could told it could use phaser instead. You know, phaser should be a lot simpler because it's not 3D. Yeah, nothing works because it's erroring out a whole bunch due to particles at emitters, not a function. I handed it a pile of these errors. I kept finding them and it just never got to a working state. I gave that same exact prompt with phaser to anti-gravity with Gemini 3. And it first try made a game that works. One of the other interesting things you might notice here is the art in particular, that the food pellets don't have clear backgrounds. So they're just kind of, weird looking here. That's because it generated all of those assets as part of my experience prompting, which is still just kind of crazy to me. Haven't seen any of these tools do that before. So if we hop back over to the agent manager and I scroll through the conversation, you'll see here that it was er, that during the conversation after the prompt, it actually generated these images as part of the reasoning flow and added these all to the game but it asked it to do a transparent background. So it did my favorite thing. It made a fake transparent background. Also a uh, failed to load image. Great. I did have complaints the first time because the fish didn't have the transparent background and the actual background like overlay that it had had fish in it. So it was hard to know which ones were and weren't part of the game. So I told it to fix that. Fish don't have transparent backgrounds. So they have ugly white backgrounds and the background for the canvas is an image including fish, which may confuse users. It should be an empty aquarium. We can see in the thought that it realized that, started to fix things, verified the visual fixes. And this is where it got really cool because when it was doing this verification, it actually opened the browser. Here is a browser window that's currently not being controlled by Gemini, but it was able to be before, which is cool. It just defaults to Chrome, but you can give it a different binary through a URL thing in settings if you want to. And it also installs an extension, the anti-gravity browser extension that allows for it to control the browser as it's doing things. And this was really cool. During its walkthrough process, it even took the screenshots and saved them and a little gameplay reel in here as well, like a bit of footage showing you the piece is working as it verified itself with the browser use agent that it behaves. This is where I'm really starting to see the vision they have. This idea that the agent manager is an inbox that we will live most of our time in the same way we do in like an email inbox that can do all of the pieces from asset creation, browser control, actual background agents running, and you're just one command E away from seeing it directly in your code base. Seems too good to be true, right? It is. This thread that I've been going over with you guys the whole time is currently dead. I don't know why. I asked it to fix the food and the coins because they had the same issue. The fish and background look great. And then it randomly failed. So I said, continue. And then it failed again. 
So let's try once more. Agent error. I thought that they might be having an outage while I was recording. So I went and tried another thread. Record a quick demo for me using the browser preview tool. I don't know why the start conversation thing just keeps hovering like that. That's very annoying, but small thing. But yeah, this other thread working fine. It can spin up the dev environment. It can go to the URL. Uh, it's going to the wrong one because I have too much stuff open, but this is still happens to be the same project, so it's fine. I can't click when I try. It gives you this agent running controls disabled warning, but it is able to do it. It is currently doing it. It's on the wrong thing, so it didn't check to see the port that it said it's using, but again, same project that just happens to be running there. It's fine. Oh, that's the phaser version. Yeah, this is the wrong version. I need to go kill all the instances of this. Let's stop and try that again. Uh, these things will be good someday. I've had a lot of little issues with Gemini 3 specifically with these types of things. Like it never uses bun unless you tell it to, even if the project has a bun lock and bun in the package manager in the like package JSON and everything, it just doesn't seem to care unless you tell it to. Even Gemini CLI was really guilty of this. All that said, the fact that the first time I tried this on both a phaser project and a 3JS project that I had it initialized from scratch, it got all of it working first try. Genuinely quite impressive. I was surprised. While I have had hiccups here and there, they don't compare at all to my channel manager, Ben, who's been playing with it too. He might publish a whole video, but uh, I'll just give you a taste of his experience really quick. This editor is the worst editor I have ever seen. I have no idea how this happened. This is not a bug in my Svelte project. The Svelte project works just fine in Cursor or any other editor. It is some bug in their VS Code fork that is causing this to not work with a Svelte extension, which is, you know, whatever, things slip through. It's an early beta build, but also this is shipping in about 10 hours, so. We'll see. The next thing is when I look at the files that the agent just edited, you'll notice that it says search for files edited by Cascade. If you've ever used Windsurf before, you've almost certainly seen Cascade because Cascade is what Windsurf calls their agent. I'm 99% sure from what I've gone through that anti-gravity's agent is not called Cascade. It's just like the Google agent or just agent or whatever. This is so obviously a build of windsurf that they took and then added a bunch of tumors on top of it's really really weird this is the most uncanny valley editor i've ever seen like this doesn't work also seriously where the hell is my syntax highlighting on here this is a code editor i would like to see my syntax to be highlighted the way cursors is arrow keys don't work on this i'm trying to arrow up and down the way i do in every other editor and cli tool i use I can't do that apparently, so I have to go up and click this. Cool. Okay, seriously, what what is this review? What what is this? What 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 are we doing here? How does it look this bad? How how the fuck is this what Google is shipping? Uh, okay, so sure review these. <laughs> what what the fuck is this? How like seriously, how the fuck? It, guys. Ugh, what the fuck is this editor? Okay, delete, go. Nice background opacity, incredible stuff. 10 out of 10. What, what wait, where, wait, where did my icons go, guys? Guys, guys, I have icons over here. Wait, where are they? Wait, where are my icons? I, I would like to see my sidebar icons. <laughs> I click it and it, fucker. Yeah, there you go, that's right. Skill issue on my part. The way this actually works is when you want to review your code, you don't click on the review code button. That's actually a red herring. That's trying to bait the bad engineers into reviewing the code too early. You see, the thing is you need to get in the agentic mindset. When you're in the agentic mindset, you realize that the agents need to tell you when you're ready. You don't tell the agent, hey, I want to review this code. No, no, no. You go to the inbox and when you go into the inbox, you'll see, oh, wait, oh, no, no. That's on me. You see, I wasn't in the agentic mindset. So when I opened it, it instantly closed. Let's see. Let's try again. No, still not in the mindset yet. All right. I am agented up. I believe in the AGI. I believe in the $10 trillion company. I believe that Google will understand. I'm going to click this button. I didn't believe hard enough. That's on me. Here you can see that it's trying to click the on the background to actually drop food pellets. And you can see the vision here, what it captured as it did that. I think this is genuinely really cool. This is the best like browser use in an IDE experience I've ever had. And I love the fact, again, that I press Command-E and I'm back to the editor instance for this particular project. 
this higher level like UX actually is really cool. The amount that it's crushing my battery, less so. But this is cool. I also noticed that this glow effect, I'm pretty sure at least it's the cause, makes it so that text entry lags out. It's not too noticeable here, but I promise you when I'm typing, I feel the lag in the text input. Can be quite annoying when you're working in a text editor. This idea of like breaking up your workspace like this, having an inbox and seeing the spinning wheels for each thing running in the background, makes us ADHD riddled folk much, much more capable of hopping between things. I've had a pretty good time with that part. But again, it breaks in a lot of different ways. I've seen everything from extensions like the Svelte extension just not working at all. Sorry, Ben. Fucking Google, man. I've seen things like threads dying and not being able to recover at all. Even just getting authenticated in it took us like two days between me and the Google people I was working with because it turns out it only worked with personal Gmail accounts at the time and not the workspace account I was using for my company. Ah. It's a small thing, but something I was kind of annoyed by is I would tell it to use a URL like this migration guide URL. And no matter what I did, it wouldn't show me that it was actually reading the page. I am sure it did because some of the information it has and some of the things it decided to do, it could only have gotten from the page, but it's not going to the web via a tool. It's going to the web via things the model can do with Gemini 3 at least. I'd be very curious how this behaves with other models like Sonnet 4.5, which should be in it very soon. But I didn't get to play with any of that. I was just playing around with the Gemini 3 stuff because there was no other way for me to try it. And this is the reason I went so deep on the editor and the reason I'm covering this first. They couldn't get the Gemini 3 API access working for a while. I got it all working last night, but that wasn't early enough for me to test things as much as I wanted to. So this is the way I've been using Gemini 3. I also got it working in the CLI very recently as well for Gemini CLI, but I still don't have Gemini 3 working in any of my other tools, editors, or surfaces. So I don't know how all this behaves in things like OpenCode or Cursor or Kilo or any other tools yet. All I know is how it works here. And I don't know if the editor is making the model smarter or dumber. I suspect dumber, not positive though. I think that's all I have to say here. If you're interested in a VS Code fork by a big company like Google that gives you a bunch of free inference, at least for now, and can be managing your Chrome browser for the work you're doing, and this new agent manager flow that I honestly hope gets copied by others, there's, this, is, this is really promising. I have hope here, even if my friend Ben does not. Let me know what you guys think. Am I being too generous to a trash editor, or is this actually kind of exciting? It's nice seeing new UX in a tool like this, and I'm actually pretty hyped. Let me know what y'all think, and until next time, peace nerds.